We'll come to a proof that the derivative of cosine x equals negative sine x. So if we have the function f of x equals cosine x, by definition the derivative is equal to the limit as h approaches zero of, then we have the difference quotient which would be f of the quantity x plus h, which in our case should be cosine of the quantity x plus h, and then minus f of x, which would be minus cosine x, all divided by h. Now we want to expand cosine of the quantity x plus h using the sum identity for cosine shown here below for reference, where the cosine of the quantity a plus b equals cosine a times cosine b minus sine a times sine b. And in our case, a equals x and b equals h. So when we expand cosine of the quantity x plus h, we get cosine x times cosine h minus sine x times sine h. For our next step, we're going to change the order of these last two terms in the numerator. So we have minus cosine x minus sine x sine h. Next we'll write this single fraction as a difference of two fractions with the denominator of h. So these two terms will be the numerator of the first fraction and this product will be the numerator of the second fraction. So now we have the limit as h approaches zero of the quantity cosine x times cosine h minus cosine x divided by h minus sine x sine h divided by h. Now for the next step, because we have a limit of a difference, we can write this as a difference of two limits. So this first line is the same line from the previous slide. And now the next line we wrote, again, the limit of this difference as a difference of two limits. So we have the limit as h approaches zero of the first fraction minus the limit as h approaches zero of the second fraction. Now looking at this first limit, notice how the numerator has a common factor of cosine x, and since x is not affected as h approaches zero, we can factor out cosine x, but we'll actually factor out negative cosine x. And looking at the second limit, we can factor out sine x because, once again, x is not affected as h approaches zero. So we need to be a little careful when factoring out the factor of negative cosine x here. If we factor out negative cosine x, it's going to change the sign of the terms in the numerator. So if we factor out negative cosine x from negative cosine x, that gives us positive one. If we factor out negative cosine x from cosine x cosine h, we're left with negative cosine h or minus cosine h. And then for our second limit, if we factor out sine x, we'd have sine x times the limit as h approaches zero of sine h divided by h. Now at this stage, we need to recognize that we have two special limits here. The limit as h approaches zero of the quantity one minus cosine h divided by h is equal to zero. And the limit as h approaches zero of sine h divided by h is equal to one. And therefore we have negative cosine x times zero minus sine x times one, which simplifies to negative sine x. And now we have our proof. We've proven the derivative of cosine x with respect to x equals negative sine x. But before we go, let's look at the graph of f of x equals cosine x and f prime of x equals negative sine x on the same coordinate plane. So we have the graph of f of x equals cosine x graphed here in blue and the derivative function f prime of x equals negative sine x graphed here in red. So the derivative function values give us the slopes of the tangent lines to the cosine function. Notice how where the derivative function is equal to zero at zero, pi, and two pi, the slopes of the tangent lines to the cosine function would have a slope of zero, meaning we have horizontal tangent lines. Notice we have a horizontal tangent line here, here, as well as here. And notice how the derivative is equal to zero, we have high points and low points on the cosine function. And we'll talk more about this in the near future.